Hey everyone, uh, this is Tony, KD8RTT. And as you can see here, I'm kind of, it's kind of tough to get in one shot. This is a uh, Slim Jim J-Pole uh, for 2 meters and 440. Uh, as you see, I just have it kind of mounted on a stand right now. Um, just for display. Wouldn't usually use it like this. But uh, I thought I'd do a quick little review here about it. Um, just because I got the cable on the ground there. And uh, let you know my experience. So, starting off, this is... Um, Built by N9TAX. You see it's a dual band Slim Jim. Uh, there's a website. You can order them online. This was about $28.99 plus shipping. Um, <clears throat> there's different models. Um, there's single banded models. Um, also, of course, a dual band, which is what this is. And then mine has the cable 16 feet of RG58 attached uh, with a... SMA mail connector on there. Um, there's also ones that are you can get different connectors uh, or no, um, just a no RG58 connected, just a connector at the end of it. Um, as you can see, it's kind of hard to judge. It's almost six feet long, I'd say, or tall. Um, if we kind of start at the bottom of it, you'll see here you got a little ferrite, all made in the USA. Ferrite B, which is kind of nice. Um, I put that Velcro there to make it easier, but uh, good quality. 450 ohm ladder lines made out of. There's a lot of heat shrink on here. Um, as you get up here, you can see. You know, it uses good quality materials. It does a good job. Um, there's even a little at the top. There's a little hole uh, for hanging. And this is just a really nice antenna. Um, I originally got this as my first. Uh, first real antenna. I bought a Yezu FT60R when I first got licensed and uh, of course wasn't quite making the repeater with uh, the rubber duck antenna. So a uh, local ham recommended this. Picked it up and I really like it. Um, it rolls up pretty nicely. Let's see how I can show this without... <laughs> um, it's flexible of course. Um, you can just kind of you can roll up tight pretty tightly. It's up to this with one hand. Um, and then I use the velcro I put at the bottom to coil it and keep it connected, throw it in my backpack. Probably even fit in like a cargo pocket. Uh, and they market these for portable and MCOM and that sort of thing. And they're pretty good for that. Um, I'm able to use it in my basement actually with my HT at 5 watts, make a local repeater. Which is like 10 miles away. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, in terms of mounting, um, of course, they recommend you keep it as far away from metal um, and really any object as you can. Um, if what I've done, or what I what I've typically done is this was in my attic for a little while, and I just kind of hung it on one of the two x four um, kind of supports up there vertically, just right on there, right against it, and it was working pretty well. Um, people do mass mounting. Some people put it on PVC pipe. Kind of seal it up, stretch it out, seal it up in there, uh, which I've heard works pretty well, but they don't really recommend it um, because of how the PVC pipe will affect the antenna. But um, what I've done when I've been outside and want to do kind of portable, I have one of those fiberglass like uh, poles for fishing, um, fishing wire through the wall, and I just kind of weave it through these these ladder holes, and then uh, it makes it pretty pretty stiff. Um, has a little bit of bend, but you can get thicker ones. Um, and then I just kind of mounted it at the top of a mast. I have a mast that's even taller than this, taller than this one. So at about I was at the base of this antenna was almost at 20 feet in the air in my backyard. And I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was able to uh, pick up weather broadcasts from Canada. So you know, it works pretty well for that. Um, a lot of people use these, you know, if they go hiking, because they can just throw it up, line up in a tree, pull it up. Um, and you know, with the model I got with the 16 feet of coax, it's pretty pretty ready to go. Um, he also he sells a bunch of other stuff. He, you also get I actually bought a coax extension for this. Um, I think it's another 16 feet, which is about the max you want to do. At RG58, you're already kind of running a lot of loss. But um, so I have that too, in case I need a little more length. And that was the case when I was running it in my attic. Um, but yeah, um, so for about 30 bucks, I really like this antenna. I think it's definitely one to get. Um, you know, I have a in terms of VHF. Um, 
I got my magman on my car, I got a couple rubber duckies, and then like a quarter wave whip. Um, this goes right on top of my HT. And then I've got this. And when I, you know, when I'm not in the car, basically this is my other good antenna. So, I like it a lot. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, I haven't used it too much on 440. Um, and I haven't been able to test the SWR on 440 because my analyzer doesn't go up that high. But here in a minute, I'll do a test on uh, two meters with the analyzer. Um, I'll hang it a little bit better in you know open space, so it's more accurate reading. Uh, just to show how uh, how good it's matched on on two meters. So go ahead and go to that uh, analyzer video. Okay, so uh, here I've kind of just hung in the middle off one of the beams of my basement here. So it's you know it's more or less a kind of a free space. Probably the best I'll be able to do. Um, so what I'm gonna do here. So now it's hanging there. And I have the analyzer. Let's see. I think I need a little too much. Alright. So let's move the camera here so we can get a little, a little bit better. Okay, so there's the analyzer. Right now we're at about 142. Let's see if we can get a little better light. Okay, that might be better. All right, so there we go, 142.07 on my 1.6 SWR. And let's sweep up, kind of. Going up in frequency. It's going down a bit. So the best SWR is about a 1.2 on 146.5 megahertz. So keep going up, and it's at 1.6 at about 1. So at 150, it's 1.8, so that's out of the band, but uh, so it's definitely under two over the entire two meter band, and it the dips at about 1.2 SWR around 146.5 megahertz. So as you can see, uh, it's pretty good. Um, can't can't check that on 440. This meter, like I said, doesn't do UHF, um, and I don't do a whole lot of UHF stuff either, but. Um, it works really well, and like I said, you can buy, there's different models, some of them are VHF only, UHF only, I believe, they, he has some like that, um, and, uh, yeah, so for the money, I definitely think they're worth it, uh, again, that's, you can get them at n9tax.com, it's information about it, I think it has a link to his, his store there, his online store there, uh, real nice guy, great to work with, and, uh, can't recommend these antennas enough, so, there you have it. Um, go ahead and message me if you have any questions or anything. Check out my blog. Leave a comment. Um, and, uh, yep, thanks for watching. 73.